and welcome to episode 133 of Voxia Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with a one-off Protoss vs. Terran. First up, introducing to you one of the best South Korean Terran players, often sadly overlooked. His name is Nextasia. And opposing him today, rather more well-known in the scene, especially in the foreign scene, formerly of Team OGS, now of Team SK Light. His name is SKMC. As I hit the wrong buttons there. Okay, so you may have already noticed that I am not quite as loud and excited as I normally get. I have an incredible incredible headache. I'm still recovering from my illness on Monday uh, and because of that I'm not really going to be the vocal terrorist today. I'm going to be the quiet terrorist today. That's what we'll do. We'll be nice and quiet. But I did want to bring you a game and this is going to be awesome. This is a one-off game. We've got two one-off games to close out the week. Today we have Taja versus MC. Tomorrow is a real treat. I'm not going to tell you who it is uh, unless I forget and tell you later. But it's going to be a real, real treat for everyone involved. It's going to be so much fun, so stick around for that, definitely. Now, interestingly, Taja going for the straight-up expand zero racks. Straight into the 14 expand. MC right now doing everything pretty much as you expect. He's going for an expansion himself. Only slightly behind Taja, so that's really nice to see. And now MC will scout with the probe. Meanwhile, and this is an advantage, by the way, guys, of Protoss. Uh, you need to be scouting super early with these probes. Because, of course, you can just throw down a building and then leave it. That's awesome. Uh, that's something I'm really loving about Protoss right now. I feel a lot uh, handier scouting with my workers. But of course, Terrans, once you hit like early early to mid, you do have mules, and that is so much nicer than just building workers. Anyway, Tage is following off his expansion with two racks, that is absolutely standard, because you don't really have the ability to grab a gas and go straight into factory, uh, while still being able to defend yourself from anything like uh, simple aggression. Like uh, the, even the three stalker aggression can do some damage if you're not careful. Luckily for him, of course, we saw MC is expanding. That will finish very shortly. That will finish just before the orbital command goes up. Orbital command is, of course, on its way. So there we go. Both players are on two base. MC sees everything in Tasia's base. So he knows there's two barracks. He knows the expansion's up. And with the timing of the orbital command as well, he knows that went up before those barracks. That's something pro players will know. Meanwhile, back in MC's base, we have the first gate out and a cyber core on the way, which will, of course, immediately begin production of warp gate. There we go. And so we just have a few marines out for Tasia. Very, very uh, slow opening. Both players being very greedy expansion wise. This is actually a thing you tend to see in Terran vs. Protoss lately. Both players uh, being very, very greedy uh, in terms of economy. Essentially, it, quite often in fact, you can see it go right up to 3 base versus 3 base before there's any real aggression. Now, MC had the Zealot on the ramp there, on the, the wide ramp, trying to perhaps stop him from seeing the expansion. Does not matter. Teja now sees everything and oh, the Stalker doesn't even go here. There we go does see absolutely everything in that base, so both players know exactly where they stand right now. Teja is going into full bio production, dropping two gas, two more racks, and I imagine will shortly be adding two more gas over here as well, once he has the work as necessary. Gas is super helpful against Protoss, because you can build tons and tons of Marauders, and as we all know, Marauders just kill Protoss. Every single Protoss unit, even Void Rays. I don't care that they can't shoot them. The fact is, if Marauders could shoot a Void Ray, they would destroy it. Therefore, Marauder is the only counter that you need for Protoss ever. Stating it right now, being controversial right here on Voxer Gaming. 
Now the thing about early game TVP is that Marines without stim can be kited all friggin' day by stalkers. That is a simple fact of life that makes Terrans hate Protoss before Stim is out. Luckily, Fatasia Stim is on the way. No combat shield yet. Does not have the gas because he only has two gas up. He is adding a third now. Surprised he's not going straight into add four. These stalkers are going to pop up on the high ground. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Now they're going to get shot. But he only loses shields because he allowed them to regen, which is always, always good. Now, as we see... MC is basically just defending right now, just warping in sentries and zealots to hold this ramp while he continues a probe production. Is building up chrono boost somewhat? Would not surprise me if we started chrono boosting the Nexus out again. And there goes the third base. So, yep, yeah, that was pretty much what MC was headed towards. Three base play. Also, getting a robo. Where has he dropped? that there it is robo facility there that i assume is going to go well into colossus with this because that is how you fight terran in many ways you get the colossus out now this is nice a couple of full pylons here obviously this one's going to get taken down but you prepare for that by dropping another one here and now this forces kgc to relinquish the center here makes him go back home to deal with that pylon scared of any aggression that might come and you still have this forward pile on here to drop units out of. So this is very nice play from MC. Getting out the robotics play we see in the production tab. Meanwhile, Tasia is adding a starport. Where is he adding the starport? Oh, right over here where it doesn't get seen. With a reactor, it's going to be made of And here we go. MC with some pressure, but damn, that is a lot of Marines. And of course, one Marauder in the bunker, two more outside. So there's not really a lot MC can do to push up that ramp. There's just too many units there. We have the five racks of production, which is absolutely sick. That allows you to get such a huge bio force. And basically, there's nothing you can do until you have AOE damage out. And we have a command center on the way for Tasia. So he's going to try and catch up in terms of economy, which he can do from behind because Terrans have mules. Anyway, we see more gateways going down for MC. Okay, going up to eight gateways. Interesting. That is about what you want off of three bases. Eight gateways and a robo chuck churning out Colossus. Not chucking out Colossus. They are churning out Colossus. As we see upgrades now. Double eBay upgrades on the way for Tejo. Plus one has plus one armor. So he's going to have the advantage there. No forge up yet for MC. Entirely, ah, and as I say that, he begins to build a forge. I assume back at his base, or perhaps not. There we go, building it outside here, double forging, as all Protoss should be doing, including myself. That is the thing I often fall behind on when I should be ahead of it. Oh, is he going to see that pile on? Obviously, not the worst thing ever. But there are two observers out on the map now, so that is nice for MC. He has a good view of everything. This factory now uh, checking for perhaps hidden bases from MC. This command center finishes is morphing to an orbital. Really not a great deal to talk about right now. Everything's kind of stood off. We have three more barracks going down and an armory. Uh, the armory is just for the upgrades. There are no Thors on the way. Trust me on that. Oh, now we're going to have a little bit of a battle. He's doing three Marauders forward. He sees only one Colossus. But a second one is about to join them. MC needs to grab a hold of that. There it goes. And now MC is chasing this army away using the Medivac for speed. Oh, in fact, Stim units are actually faster than the Medivac, so never mind. Oh, if you can pick it up. Oh, that's a lot of units lost right there. A lot of units for Tasia goes down, and he can't even go to the main base because there's too many units here as well, and cannons. Oh, nice play from MC. Picking off a ton of units from that medevac and stopping the drop, and now these units are going to be trapped up here. The medevacs have not reached them, and they are going to be stuck, and MC has followed them all the way here. He thought they'd be safe, but no. And so he's going to lose a ton of bio here. And it's about two and a bit production cycles worth of bio lost. And then another load trapped out here in these medevacs. 
finally does catch the forward pile on there. Does manage to take that down. And now we see MC with really a commanding lead here. He had three bases up much, much quicker. He's got a better army supply. He's got a good army composition. We finally have Vikings coming out of the starport, but only one at a time for them uh, at the moment from Tasia. Right now, MC really has the advantage here. We've got plus two starting for both men. They're going to be relatively even in upgrades. Still more Colossi coming out from MC. More gateways going down to help him rebuild the army now that he's at max supply. Forward pylon going down in the middle of the map, right by that zone of watchtower. MC is feeling pretty damn confident at this point. One lone scout marine there does die to the Colossi. Now he needs to be careful with his unit movement here. You need to make sure the Zealots are in front, the Colossus are behind, but the Zealots right now are not in front. So losing a lot of Stalkers here, but the Colossi are doing their damage. And that is important. The three Vikings though will take these Colossus down eventually. And the Marauders to be forward as well. Oh man, MC is in some trouble. He does not have enough units here. He has more Stalkers streaming in, but there's no Zealots now to tank the damage. Now the one thing about Tasia is he has all those Vikings, so he does have to remake them. But Tasia there, wow, absolutely controlling that fight much, much better. MC is trying to build the Nexus there at the goal base, but that is not going to happen. Tasia is going to shut that down very, very shortly, although he does have a lot of Stalkers now to defend this. That is the advantage of having all those gates up. And the question is, will Tasia stim forward and force the cancel? Or will he in fact be able to kill this army? I don't know. Ah, it's tough with Medivacs there as well to help heal. Nice stunner stepping, keeps him safe from the Zealots. But a blink forward there. A blink forward from the Stalkers. Right on top of the army. More Zealots being walked into the tank. His base will finish. And MC again takes the lead economy-wise. And it's going to do, it looks like, just enough here to continue to push Tasia back. It's really tight. Tasia, of course, streaming more and more bio in it as... Oh, nice blink there. As the Zealots go down, the Stalkers are increasingly more vulnerable. But we have a Colossi out now. A Colossus, rather. So that should change that battle in his favour. Charges on the way, along with plus three, plus three. Ship weapons level one, though, on the way. So those Vikings are going to take down these Colossus very very quickly. We have another command center, by the way, moving forward to take the gold here. So Tasia wanting to stay equal in economy. I do not blame him whatsoever. Stimming forward with just two units here. He's going to see this base, but it doesn't really matter. There's nothing here. It should be all that surprising. He's no, he must know MC. He's been on three bases for a while. Now the gold is turning into a planetary fortress that should keep it nice and safe for the most part, as long as he can hold the middle ground here. It gives him a place to fall back to as well when he's in trouble. Now we have the Colossi doing some damage. Charge is not yet finished. This is not the ideal time for MC to engage. He wanted charge to be done, but it is not. He's having to engage now and he's losing a lot of units. This is looking worse and worse for MC. The Colossi died. More Zealots now streaming in. Charge is done, so they are finally effective. And he does manage to push this bio force back again. Nice pick-offs of the air units as well. They're getting a couple of Medivacs and Vikings. Always nicely, but he doesn't have enough uh, forces now to pressure the planetary fortress. If he had a Colossus, he could stand up here and snipe workers all day long. That's what you need to be careful of as a Terran here. And that is, in fact, what MC should be about to do. There's no bio force that he could kill all these workers with his splash and not be in range of the planetary fortress. Get on it, MC. Oh, finally, here we go. So he is going to start to kill these units so, so quick. Forced him to move. Ah, be careful. And now, in fact, he's going to take down the PF itself. Oh, but here come the Vikings. Here comes the Bioforce. Now so MC needs to be careful. Pulls back at just the right time. Oh, nearly half snipes a Viking there. Nice moves from MC. If he can take down those Vikings, the Colossus will be... Incredibly more effective. And now Snipes one Viking down, Snipes two Viking downs. There. There's only one Viking out right now. SCVs are coming forward to tank for Tasia, but damn, this is going to be close. 
MC with some nice puzzles there, holding some leaders off, but now blocking his own talents. MC though with a massive supply lead. Some of that will be in workers, but a lot of it is in elsewhere. Oh! The Colossus was attacking the refinery, not the units. That's so bad! And now Tasia may just have enough, but no. More zealots streaming in now from the south, charging in, and it looks like MC is going to take this fight. Now, Tasia has a ton of bases up. He has this base up and this base up, but the question is, can he hold them? MC now, with a huge advantage, is going to come in towards this PF again, forces Tasia to move away and immediately start re auto repairing. Even though it was not in any danger. We have three Archon, Psy Storm, Protoss Shields level 1 on the way. I am not keeping up with the tech whatsoever. I'm so excited about these battles that are going on in the middle. We have Terran Shield Weapons level 2 now. So again, those weapons will become even more effective. Ah, careful with that Colossus. Make sure it stays on the high ground so that you can uh, kill the PF without being sniped. And now we're going to go after this refinery again. Takes that down and again is going to attack this time from the side. Uh, it just looks like he wants to take it down now. He's seen that there's not enough cell. Holy crap, Tasia, GG's. He sees the size of the force, he sees the size of his bio army, and that is it. Tasia, GG's out of the game. Holy crap, MC with a surprising win there. Looks really, really close about the mid game, but that GG came out of nowhere for me. I was expecting at least one more attempt from the bio to fight back, perhaps uh, to switch into Ghost Tech. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. MC takes the Thursday game. Anyway, my head is killing me, but thank you very much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with our surprise replay. It's going to be awesome, guys. Stick around and get it watched. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. I've been the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, signing out.